What's up, YouTube? I'm Thinkimoto, and welcome to the Thinkimoto Show. If you don't know what that is, that's where I recycle content for my Twitch stream, and I put it right here on YouTube for everybody, and uh, it's sick because I don't have to do a bunch of extra work. But this is also hybrid YouTube playlist uh, story time episode, and today our story time is going to be called Romo Dragonfly. And if you don't know what Bromo Dragonfly is, neither did I, okay? So, <laughs> Bromo Dragonfly was, I guess the, the easiest way I can, I can explain is I was given this like hit of acid from one of my friends and he was like, is a little piece of foil and he was like this shit is really strong dude it's called bromo dragonfly it's like acid but like a fuck ton stronger and after doing a little bit of research uh bromo dragonfly is lsd and the lsd molecule is like a stick with like a bubble or like a octagon attached to that stick right and then the uh Bromo Dragonfly molecule is the stick with two octagons. And the, the top octagon or the top molecule is amphetamine. So it's basically LSD hybrid amphetamine. So this drug, if I was to talk about how like it felt, this 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 acid or bromo this this bromo dragonfly the way it feels is it's literally like 14 and a half hours of the scariest peaking experience of any acid trip you've ever had or of any acid trip I've ever had like at the peak of the acid trip when you get the either the incredible explosion in your mind or the fear you are always at that point on this drug maybe it's because of the amphetamine in it or whatever but literally it's peaking for like 14 hours straight i didn't know that at the time i didn't know that uh <laughs> when i actually took it or anything I just like found that out later because it's kind of like after I took it, I was like, what in the fuck was that? Right. So, um, <laughs> basically my friend gave it to me in a little piece of foil. I put it in my wallet. I had this like Chuck E. Cheese wallet that I had since fucking high school, bro. It was crazy, crazy old, cool ass wallet. Not relevant to the story, but it was sick. I, um, <laughs> I got this piece, I got this asset stuck in my wallet, forgot about it. Like, month goes by. I've just been like cruising with a fucking piece of acid in my fucking pants all the time. Didn't didn't care, remember, even remember it was there, right? And uh me and my buddy, which will re remain nameless for the I don't know, just the sake of this like video. Um we were taking a bunch of Adderall at the time, just because like we had a bunch of Adderall. At this point, we had made our way to, uh, me and my buddy had made our way to our friend's house, and, uh, like, we were really close with, like, their family, so, like, it was her mom's house, and it was actually his family member, so, like, it was, like, his aunt or some shit, <laughs> or, uh, they're related in some way, I don't know how, but, um, uh, basically, we go over to this house, we're fucking... You know, kind of cracked out, but everybody was asleep at the house after a certain point. And we're just like, me and my homie were just sitting in the living room. Yeah, so basically, like, I had, we were, we were just like coming down and we were like, are we going to like just like wrap it up or, you know, are we going to try to like keep partying and get some more beer or something? And, uh, I, it dawned on me that I had this fucking like super acid, you know, in my, uh, in my wallet. And then, you know, it was like five, it was like 5am. It was like, 
nothing happened. So it was like, I was like, fuck it. I was like, you want to split this like piece of acid I have? And he was like, I don't know if like how much we'll feel from a piece, but like basically, you know, we could like microdose or something. We could like both get a little feeling out of it instead of one of us just like tripping nuts, you know, whatever. So we, without even thinking it would work, right? Like we split it in half and we both take a piece and we just like, all right, so now we just gotta like basically stay busy for like an hour, right? So we play video games or some shit. And like an hour goes by, nothing happens. And we're like, fuck man, like, you know, it's just like, it didn't work. We didn't have enough. We split it between two people. We're not gonna feel anything. We didn't even feel like loose or any like weirdness or giggly or shit, nothing. And uh, you know, two hours go by, still don't feel anything. Three hours go by, still don't feel anything. At this point, like four hours go by, uh, everybody wakes up in the house. Like the family wakes up, uh, mom comes out, she offers to like, she's like, hey, do you guys want breakfast? She, she makes us breakfast and shit. And, uh, you know, everything's chill. We're just fucking going about our day, whatever. We're like, we're going to get to sleep at some point. We're just not even fucking tired. We just, we've been on Adderall, you know? So we're like, we're not even tired at this time. And uh, we're eating, you know, fucking chilling. Like, it's, it's been like six hours since we've taken this shit at this point. Thinking nothing is going to happen. <laughs> and then <laughs> they're at... The ladies, the mom's name was Sue. And she was like, she came up to me and she was like, you, you know, hey, we're all going to go out to the bar tonight. You know, you want to come with us up there? We're going to go down and fucking yada, yada. And I'm looking at her in her face and I'm, I'm looking straight in her face and her, her face just twists. It, it, it twists the fuck up and it spooked me. And I was like, what? Whoa. What, what the fuck, what the fuck was that? And like, she didn't really like, she didn't notice that I was startled, but it really, it, it me. Welcome. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? So I'm, I'm like, okay, this has to be, you know, I, I, I took hallucinogenics. This has to be what it is. I look over to my buddy and he's looking dead at me and he's just going just nodding up and down looking dead in my eyes like yeah dude me too it's happening right now and it was like the most intense visuals I have ever felt in my entire life bro like I I've ever seen in my entire life like it Sue's face completely twisted as if so, it was like a play-doh and somebody pinched it and just like twisted it bro it was crazy and so i text my buddy that's sitting next to me and i was like yo we gotta get the fuck out of here this is about to be crazy like so i i texted him i was like you gotta get the fuck out of here and uh we were like to, to everybody at the house or whatever we were like we're gonna go walk to the gas station and uh get some shit or whatever to get, we were like we're gonna get some beers or we're gonna do whatever um so like we walk start walking to the gas station and it feels like i mean <laughs> it, it was it, it, it everything was like the most vivid that i have ever seen in my entire life bro like it was like f floss phosphorescent i can't say that word phos phosphorescent phosphorescent like it was very like everything was just like if you took an image and you put it on like a photoshop or something and you took like NJ. a few and you like whoop, just pulled it over it, it was it was crazy man and it just seemed like animated and weird and i remember like as i'm walking as i'm walking like i'm looking down at my feet and there's like concrete under my feet, right? And I'm walking on the concrete, but the concrete felt like a ball, right? And I was like, it felt like my feet were 
circling this ball. You know, it was making the, the ball spin underneath my feet when I was walking. And like, that's, it felt like a hamster wheel or something. Like when I took a step, it felt like I was staying in the same place, but the ground was moving underneath me. So like, it was kind of wacky, dude. <laughs> so this is where the crackhead comes in. We finally get to the gas station, bro. And in Florida, you are guaranteed at least 85% of the time if you pull up to a gas station, there will be a crackhead out there handling his business. And do not interact. Do not make eye contact. Get in, get out. Do not ever interact with a crackhead, bro. Don't you don't don't do it. They have literally superhuman strength. So we pull up on this fucking gas station. And there is a dude. And now keep in mind, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on hallucinogenics right now. So like what I'm seeing might not be accurate. All right. It might not be accurate, but this is what I'm seeing. Okay. I see a man wrapped up in a bicycle. And when I'm saying wrapped up in a bicycle, I mean, like, pipe cleaners twisted up in this thing dude like he is stuck in he's stuck in this bicycle bro he's laying on the ground and it seems like he had been trapped inside of this bicycle for a while because it just it looked like he had he was he was out of, he was tuckered out he was str- he was plum tuckered out he was like a, a animal caught in a trap that had been in there so long that it just had no fight left in him. And he's just laying on the ground going, help me, help, help me, help me, help me. And I look over, there's a fucking bottle of fucking empty fucking like ha- half a hand, like the, the, the flat ones not the whole handle but like the flat larger bottle of like irish rose or something like that and it was gone it was fucking flat out empty and this man was just drunk and entangled in a bicycle but he was like reaching out to him he's just like help me help me and this man's skin I mean, I'm going to, it's not important context of the story, but I'm going to tell you that he was an African American man, just so you can paint the picture for yourself of like the visual, right? He, his skin looked like an alligator's skin and it was just cracked like canyons like an old dashboard his skin looked like an old fucking dashboard dude like covered in just like cracks and festers and bro it was the scariest thing i've ever encountered in my life he's reaching out to me saying help me he's like trapped in this bicycle help me and i was like Look, dude. I was like, look, bro. I am not going to touch you. I refuse to touch you. I will not touch you. But I will call anybody you need right now. I was like, if you need an ambulance, I will call. I won't be here when they get here, but I will call for you. I will absolutely not touch you. And as soon as I said the words, I will call. It's like this man did a magic trick and his body turned into sand. He fell out of the bicycle and like fucking stood up completely rejuvenated and conscious and wanted to fight me because like, I was trying to call the cops on him. 
like completely like it was almost like he was faking it <laughs> it was almost like he was faking it he jumped up he's like you ain't calling nobody on me motherfucker and just like grabbed his bike and fucking like bro, like he started like shuffling his fucking bike at me and shit. he's like we ain't calling nobody at me and then he fucking just left and i never saw a crocodile man again <laughs>